Hello, this is Grandmaster Brian Smith with iChess, and uh, I'm presenting a, a series of videos. Uh, the organization of this uh, series is based on uh, the idea that there are, from my point of view, four major skill sets that can help you to improve your chess. So to start off with, and probably most important, is your method of thinking, calculation, and your way of essentially picking between one move or another move. Uh, the second skill, also extremely important, is uh, your intuitive understanding. So this skill helps you, first of all, to find what kind of candidate moves you're going to look at as far as your calculation. To helps you to, to pick the, the, the moves that you, you, you will consider. And it can be based on general understanding. Uh, I mean, it's based on general understanding, but it be, can, can become uh, a, a calm positional situation or a crazy tactical position, still intu intuition plays a role and understanding plays a role. It also helps you to evaluate the final positions of your calculation and generally as you're going along with your calculations to sense whether you're on the right path. So this is extremely important. Now a third important uh, skill set in chess is, or let's say a, a, a third important area of chess is concrete knowledge. So this is especially relevant to the opening and the end game. And while this has been overblown as far as uh, books and, and chess media, many things devoted to specific openings, which will really only help you a little bit, it's still important uh, to have an opening repertoire and it's Im important to understand basic uh, end game positions to know a number of basic positions. And the fourth important area of chess improvement is the sporting or psychological factors. These are things which, um, as far as this video series, I, I can't really, it doesn't make sense for me to uh, talk that much about uh, your physical health regimen because I'm showing chess information, but this is of course important. Psychology, we do a couple, I do a couple videos there uh, dealing with uh, some psychological hangups that can cause people to have uh, problems uh, to have worse results than they ought to. So I hope you enjoy this course. I hope you learn a lot from it. Uh, this is Grandmaster Brian Smith with iChess. In part one, I talk about uh, the method of thought of, of a chess player, improving your method of thought. So this is essentially your calculation your way of determining what, what move you're going to make. So to begin with, I have a couple of videos uh, discussing the, just the general method of calculation where I illustrate, um, I illustrate um, calculation as I might do during a game, thinking out loud. I then go on to talk about a variety of different, uh, of different problems that develop in people's calculation, such as tunnel vision, the Kotov syndrome, uh, assumptions about uh, certain about what move uh, is uh, uh, worth considering or about the final position breaking off calculations too early. I also discuss the concept that there are two sides to calculation that you have to be uh, aware of your opponent's ideas to the same degree that you are watching your own, that you are aware of your own ideas. So this, uh, this section is extremely important as far as improving your chess. And if you can look at your own form of thought, your ways of thought, and root out your errors in the way you think, then you can greatly improve your chess and not just a short-term improvement, but rather a long-term improvement. show an example of uh, what you might call straight line calculation. So this is a situation where every move is forcing, and there's not a whole lot of question of the evaluation of the position in the end. So it's usually either you checkmate, you win a large amount of material. Uh, so in a sense, this makes the calculation easier. But at the same time, you have to be extremely accurate uh, because the final positions are always going to be so clear that the game is over. Uh, so this was my game against Grandmaster Kekalidze uh, from 2013. I have the white pieces. And if you look, the position is pretty wild looking. Uh, white has, well, the queen and knight are under attack. Also, the bishop on h6 can be hanging. Uh, 
Of course, there are a lot of pieces aimed at the Black King. There's a huge amount of force aimed at the Black King. But if I don't break through, I'm losing some material here. So this makes it pretty easy to calculate. And I had to, of course, do the calculations before I went into this position. Because if I don't have a win, if I don't have what I have here, I would simply lose a piece and there would be no real hope. Um, so let's calculate along with me. I'm not going to move the pieces, so you can try to visualize along, uh, which of course is a very important um, skill to learn in chess. So white has to make forcing move. Uh, and it has to be real forcing because my queen is under attack. So the first move, of course, that you look at is knight takes g6. This is the obvious candidate move. The other forcing candidate move is bishop takes g7. But it's real easy to see that this exchange only liberates black's position. And after king takes g7, I'm losing my knight on e5 because my queen has to move away. And I he takes the knight. Now, you can... Think of this like, okay, so if I take g7, king takes g7, queen g3, f takes e5, queen takes e5, check. Okay, it's probably losing for white. Uh, the knight on d5 holds e7. But that's something that might, if for instance, if it went the other knight takes g6 doesn't work, then okay, you have to go for that. But you, you don't calculate that first because that's uh, not satisfactory. And... Also, uh, knight takes g6, uh, it promises a possible win. Now, of course, we see some uh, uh, signs of a combination here. We can see different points which are weakened. So e7 and f6 and g7, this constellation of dark squares. The bishop is pinned, so we can, uh, we can try to break down uh, this this uh, on f6. It ultimately, I think you can say f6 would be our our target to try to, that we have to break through again on this point because this is this is the key to Black's castle. So knight takes g6, the forcing move, and well, we're just giving away a knight, but why? Well, okay, we obviously opening up our two rooks. So let's calculate now. Let me clear out the highlights. So. Knight takes g6 check. So first of all, black can either take the knight or not take the knight. Uh, but taking the knight is clearly the most important to calculate, and we should do that first. We can because it doesn't look like he can uh, get away with not taking it. Uh, we can come back to that if uh, if it turns out that it works. Uh, knight him capturing and it works for us then. Uh, we'll come back to, to whether he can maybe um, decline the knight. So knight takes g6, h takes g6. So once again, uh, we need a forcing move. Now bishop is also hanging on h6. So, and the queen is, of course is hanging. Queen takes g6 obviously doesn't work because rook takes h6. And black removes his key, defense, key attacker and, and strengthens his position and is up two pieces. So uh, after h takes g6, we need to take the bishop on g7. So now, okay, the crucial thing to calculate, of course, is king takes g7. Uh, this, is, this is the line which uh, um, we have to solve in order for this to work at all. But we also realize that black can um, play king f7 or even king g8. We can also have to look at that and uh, and leave leave two pieces hanging. The queen will be hanging and also the bishop. But first we should calculate what happens if he just takes the bishop because this is more likely to refute our attack. So knight g6, h g6, and the reason we calculate that first, by the way, is if it's more likely to refute our attack, then we save time. We can dismiss Knight takes g6, although in this position, actually dismissing knight g6 is, uh, uh, would be equivalent to resigning practically. But uh, in, in general, if your opponent has a move that's either more likely to, to win for you or to lose for you, you should calculate it first. Uh, because you've come to a conclusion on that, 
and then the more the more difficult stuff you come later if you your future if the, the the move doesn't work for you then you move on to something else but rather than wasting time on more unclear variations okay so knight takes g6 h takes g6 bishop g7 king g7 still the queen is hanging we still need a forcing move so rook takes e7 is the obvious one so after rook takes e7 black can either take or go king f8 if king g8 obviously queen takes g6 is check and then queen f7 checkmate next so again we're going to look at takes first because it's he's taking a pieces it's more likely to repeat our attack but this one's pretty easy for us to calculate uh, so just to recap again knight g6 h g6 bishop g7 king g7 rook e7 knight e7 knight takes e7 rook takes e7 again with rook from e1 and now black has king f8 or king g8 well we see that we've removed the h7 pawn when we took on g6 he had to take back and we removed the e7 pawn so both e6, f6 and g6 are um, undefended so after king f8 we take g we take f6 check king g8 and then we have queen g7 or rook g7 mate it's the same thing after king g8 we take on g6 check king f8 and then queen f7 or queen g7 both checkmate okay so now we need to go back to the last point which we were looking at which was the most which was the most um, unclear of the recent deviations which was if black doesn't take the uh if black doesn't take the the rook on e7 he leaves the knight on d5 where it defends f6 so we better calculate that so knight g6 hg6 bishop g7 king g7 rook e7 check now king f8 okay our queen is hanging f6 is guarded so what forcing moves do we have well we have rook e8 check we have rook f7 check and obviously queen f6 or queen h6 are bad because we lose the queen so rook to e8 check however we black will have to will will take the queen or he even has king f7 or take the rook or even has king f7 so king f7 actually then we can quickly realize that even that white's queen is hanging and the rook is now hanging from the rook on h8 so white can take the queen but black takes the queen and black's up material also black could um, take the rook on e8 after knight g6 h6 bishop g7 king g7 rook e7 king f8 rook e8 queen e8 rook takes e8 king and rook takes e8 and then we count the pieces and we see okay bishop is gone from h6 knight is gone from e5 both rooks were traded for the black queen all we have is our queen left black still has the knight on d5 and both rooks so that's not really satisfactory and plus we already saw that black could presumably play king f7 as well uh, and uh, queen is hanging so that's not going to work so rook e8 we we uh, exclude this move okay rook f7 well king f7 that's just it there's no more checks there's nothing so now we realize maybe combination doesn't work for a second but then we think okay at this point i'm only down a piece i've sacrificed a knight on g6 i'm only down a piece and the black king is very isolated so maybe here we can play a less forcing move well what is there okay well g6 is hanging so we play queen takes g6 and now we threaten checkmate queen f7 and rook f7 queen g7 so there's no question that black has to take the rook on e7 with a knight so knight takes e7 now we need forcing moves and the most obvious of course queen takes f6 check and then we start to realize okay this works queen takes f6 he can't go to e8 because queen takes e7 is checkmate and if he goes to g8 now uh, now we can take the rook uh, take the knight on e7 with our rook of course we want to use our rook because this this is maximizing the power of our pieces is the first thing we calculate 
if it doesn't work, we can go back and look at um, other moves, such as queen takes e7, or even start thinking if we have to make a perpetual with queen g5, or something like that, although that's also winning. But anyway, we just take on a uh, we just take on e7 with a rook, and now we look, okay, black is up a rook. Black is up a rook, but we're threatening queen to g8, g7 checkmate, and rook to g7 checkmate. Now, it's of course, we're assuming all this time black has no counter threats, which we can clearly see. Um, so what can black do to defend against those threats to g7? Well, he has rook to h7. So now if you can imagine this position, we have queen on f6, black has no pawns left. We've annihilated all of the pawns on the king side. We have rook on e7, queen on f6, the black king is on g8, black has no knight, no bishop left, uh, the, and black has just played rook h7. Well, what forcing moves do we have here? Taking h7 is not what we want. We are only left with a queen, at best perpetual check, and not even that, probably. So what else do we have? Ah, we have queen to g6 check. Queen to g6 check. Black can't block with a rook because we have our rook on e7. We're attacking g7 with queen and rook. And if, uh, if king to h8, then we can take the rook on h7 with checkmate either way. So king f8. Well, now we can take his rook with our queen and then we're now no longer down material, so it's already enough to stop calculating, but also it's checkmate next, uh, either queen g7 or queen f7. Black can't defend both squares. So, okay. Now it's, it's always kind of hard to go back after you've found a variation and, and, and solved a, a, a certain, a, a line, because this requires a working memory. And this, this is, tends to be a tough, tough thing. Well, at least for me, I don't know. For everyone but we have to go back and generally I, I just go to the beginning of the whole thing and to remember what lines black we we haven't looked at yet so knight g6 hg6 bishop g7 okay it seems we've solved king takes g7 and that was my suspicion when we looked when i looked at okay king takes g7 would lose it was pretty obvious rook takes e7 uh, so let's now think about king f7 so by this point, by the way, I'm already pretty ready to play knight takes g6 because all the other lines were losing for white, but don't do it yet. We still calculate. So king f7. So now my queen and bishop are both hanging. So I need a forcing move. And the only reasonable one is rook takes e7 check, which also helps white to conquer this f6 square, which is our target point. So rook takes e7. Now black can black uh, black can take the rook. He could also play king to g8, but then we have queen takes g6. And it's very clear that the black king is ensconced. Uh, we look for a second, okay, he can also take the rook then it probably doesn't make a difference because it's going to transpose. He can take on e7 then. Queen is under attack, but then we have rook takes e7. Now we're getting ready for a discovered, discovered uh, check, a checkmate such as bishop to h6, um, which is checkmate and many other deadly threats. The only way you can meet this, since the black king can't move, is some way to attack the white queen, offer a trade. Can he play queen f5? No. Just white has, besides obvious queen takes f5, uh, there should be checkmate with bishop takes h8, or sorry, with queen f7, king h7, and then uh, a bishop discovery. If we want to bother with that, yeah, we have bishop to f8, but taking the queen is already enough to break off calculation there. So let's go back. Knight g6, hg6, bishop g7, king f7. Rook e7. So let's try if he takes, if he takes the rook with a knight. Okay, we have two forcing moves. We can either make a further sacrifice with rook takes e7, and he would have to take with a king, and then we have queen takes f6, 
well, then his king starts running, so that doesn't promise very much. So instead I'm going to look at first queen takes f6 check, uh, which is much more promising. And I quickly realize that queen takes f6, uh, black, uh, black has... Um, king to, black has to play king to g8 because if king to e8 and I take e7, queen takes e7 checkmate, so king g8. Okay, so now you can see the position. White is down a whole rook. Black has a knight on e7, but we can take that knight. So I. So. So I, I think we have to take with a rook. Because uh, we can look at also other moves. Bishop takes h8, so on like this. And come back to that, but it looks most obvious to remove this important defender. Rook takes e7, which also creates massive threats like queen to f7, king h7, bishop f8, checkmate, this kind of thing. So then we say, okay, can he, he black is still up the exchange. Can he somehow bring a piece over to defend? And then we realize, okay, in this line, Black still has a pawn on g6, so he has queen f5. And for a second, we start to think that our attacking setup has not worked out, although our, all of our intuition tells us that this must be the right way and that it should win. And then we realize, okay, I'm only down the exchange, and the rook on h8 is hanging. So I can just play bishop takes h8, and the queen is still defended uh, by the black by the by the bishop. And so if black takes the queen, bishop takes and whites up a piece. And we look for a second, does black have any counterplay? No, nope. doesn't have any counterplay. Now let's go back and just check these odds and ends, which looked like they obviously didn't work. So for instance, knight g6, can he move his king? Well, okay, he has three squares. King to g8, well, we see that now g7 is attacked twice, or just our knights in the way. Well, we need to move the knight out of the way with check. So knight takes e7 check. Knight takes g7, queen takes g7, checkmate. We don't need to bother king f7, queen takes g7, because this is obviously going to lead to quick mate. So let's see some other moves. Knight g6, okay, king f7. Can he play king f7? Well, we already see that we have, at minimum, knight takes h8 with check. He'll have to take that knight, and then I can remove my queen from attack by queen h5 check, and then white's the one up material. White sacrificed nothing and won the exchange in a pawn with a continuing attack. Don't have to bother with the fact that black is getting mated after king f7. If we if we need to, we can look at rook takes e7, and that leads to force mate. Rook takes e7, knight takes e7, rook takes e7, king g8, rook g7. But in general, once you see an obvious win, it's enough to stop. And, you know, If you get to the position, you'll find that you'll look for more accurate. Now finally, knight g6, king e8. Well, okay, this looks awful for black. So we first thing we see is just the the brutal move, rook takes e7 check. And knight takes e7, rook takes e7, king d8. Well, so now the queen is still hanging, and the knight is hanging. Yeah, it must be a win there, but it's not uh, it's not obvious yet. So we look again, knight takes g6, king e8. So we can we can also say, well, we have even knight takes e7, okay, which threatens discovered check on the black, uh, discovered check and, and winning the, the black queen. If knight takes e7 and rook takes e7 and... Uh, check king king to d8 and then we have queen takes g7 and black is just lost so knight takes c7 if black takes the queen then we say okay we have at least knight takes c8 king which is check king has to move then we can take g7 black's already lost a piece and even if he somehow by some miracle is attacking two uh two point two white's bishop on with rook to g8 or so, and the knight he'd still be down a couple pawns. So we we say, okay, now we play knight takes g6. So now let's let's look. Okay, so first of all, king e8. 
Um, this move I, I'm sure I didn't look at because it was so obviously bad. Uh, it looks it looks so so hopeless for black that I, I, I doubt I really even calculated it. Um, so it does it does look though like okay we have moves like queen h5 even which is hopeless for black queen h5 for instance and if black takes the knight then queen takes and I regain the piece with several extra pawns and a winning attack um, knight takes c7 also if he takes the queen knight takes c8 check king moves somewhere and then take here. Well, this is this is probably not as good as as queen h5, and surely there must be some other ways to win. We looked at king f7, but of course, we saw I saw knight takes h8, but rook takes c7. Of course, is the forced mate. So, so now and then king g8, knight e7, and that's knight e7, queen g7. Okay, so that's the the moves that I probably, to be honest, don't think I calculated during the game. Um, H takes g6. So this is the main line. Bishop takes g7. And now we calculated first king takes g7. Rook takes e7 check. And then we, we saw knight takes c 7 Rook takes e7. And either pawn will be taken with check. So king f8, queen f6, queen g7. Or king g8, queen g6, queen g7. So, so much for knight takes e7. King g8, queen g6, followed by mate, king f8. Now, this was the point where we said, okay, queen is hanging, rook is hanging, white's down a piece. Had a moment of doubt, but then realized queen takes g6 is, while well, relatively quiet move, is totally crushing because black can't get his pieces over. So, there's a threat of mate by queen f7 or queen g7. Black clearly has to take the rook. Now queen takes f6 check, king g8, and rook takes c7. Also, it's possible to go here and take the knight with check and then come back, but it's not necessary. So just take on e7, threatening queen g7, rook g7. We look, black can't defend both those squares. Queen f8, I forgot to mention, but there's simply queen g6. Black has an epaule in the king. So rook h7, queen g6 check. And then we see, of course, king h8. We take the rook with checkmate. King f8, queen takes h7. And there's no defense to the threats. So we, that's what we looked at with knight, with, uh, knight taking. So then we need to look at king f8. Oh, sorry. We, we, we looked at king f8 with... We need to look at the other moves here. Okay, we saw king e8, queen takes g6. We saw, or actually I'm not sure if I mentioned the thing with king g8. Uh, we have queen takes g6. I think I forgot to, to mention this one here. Obviously, uh, you don't really have to calculate it so much because white's not down any material. It's up several, up a, up a pawn, two pawns. Um, and has huge threats discovered checks you can maybe start thinking well he has queen e8 but then it's enough to see we can trade queens and take the rook so king f7 was the move then we looked at so of course rook takes e7 was forced knight takes e7 now we didn't bother to calculate rook takes e7 um, because it's uh, because it's not necessary because we already found a win with queen takes f6. Now, if we got to this position, we might say, okay, after queen f6, according to my calculations, I'm only up a piece. A uh, piece is normally enough, especially with white will also have some more pawns. And we could start looking, is there a force mate with rook e7? But that would be a little bit perfectionistic in any way there isn't. Um, black, uh, black doesn't have to go to, um, doesn't have to run to d7, in which case there would be a force mate. Kind of a nice one, bishop e5, um, and king d8, bishop f6, but instead he could go to e8. And now white's actually winning here too because we'll take the rook, but it's not, not, you know, white's 
uh, just up the just as a three pawns for the exchange. So it's clearly much better to take this one, King G8, of course. And now again, we have to make relatively quiet move, but we're not really down material. So Rook takes E7, and this is the position we looked at. Queen F7 made as threat, or not made, but King H7, Bishop F8 made. Also taking the rook, so white has lots of threats. Uh, and we saw that, well, okay, I forgot to mention, rook to h7, queen f7 is made, slightly important. Um, queen f5 is then the last thing we said by some sort of miracle, black will be surviving, but then we realize, no, we just take the rook, and, uh, and the queen is protected. And so this was, this was an example of what is basically fairly simple calculation, uh, but doing it in an orderly way, um, starting with the most clear-cut moves in every line. So if you're going into this, there's a line that you it either works or it doesn't. That's the first thing to calculate before starting to look at the more unclear lines. And uh, in most cases, there. You're not playing essentially without an opponent because black here had no counterplay. The white king is perfectly safe. So things get a lot more messy in a lot of cases. It's harder to evaluate the final position. In this, there was not a single final position that was hard to evaluate. Um, but this is the basic method for this kind of very forcing position.